Come on, technology. All right. We are live on Facebook. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Texas Normal's May meeting. I am joined tonight, well, I'm Jax James, Executive Director of Texas Normal, FYI, um, and I'm joined tonight with Mike Siegel. So Mike and Julie have worked um, to put together this great organization called Ground Game Texas, and, you know, I'm going to let Mike tell you a little bit about who they are and what they're doing out there, um, and I also want to let everybody know we will do some Q&A towards the end um, to see if y'all have any questions for Mike. So please drop them in the chat or the comments just in case. Um, but Mike, go ahead, take it away. Tell us more about G Ground Game Texas and what y'all are doing. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks so much, Jax. And uh, great to be with uh, Texas Normal here. I really appreciate what y'all do. Um, so yeah, I'm Mike Siegel. I'm the political director of Ground Game Texas. Uh, and before I had this job, um, I've been a civil rights lawyer, city attorney, but I think in the political space, most notably, I ran for Congress a couple of times. I was a Democratic nominee in 2018 and 2020 and uh, learned a fair amount about politics, didn't want to keep running in one of these gerrymandered districts. Uh, and after the 2020 campaign, joined together with Julie Oliver, a similar kind of progressive activist candidate. We both had like really strong grassroots campaigns and she didn't want to run again either, but she wanted to stay in the fight. And so um, we came together to start what we now call Ground Game Texas. And the idea was to respond to a few things in politics in Texas. One is that uh, a lot of people don't vote, you know, no surprise. 2020, five and a half million Texans who were registered didn't vote. Another million and a half, two million people didn't, uh, could have registered, but didn't register. So you got 7 million people on the sidelines. Uh, another problem in Texas politics is that um, you have these gerrymandered districts. So people who are in the so-called safe districts, including a lot of Democrats uh, you may know about, um, they don't run strong campaigns in the fall when, you know, the general election is happening. They basically run a strong campaign in, in the spring to win their nomination, and then they don't spend any money in the fall, which means that you have really low turnout in a lot of these urban areas uh, in particular. Then the last thing we noticed uh, that we were kind of responding to is that uh, the president, Joe Biden, lost in many states around the country to popular, what you would call progressive issues. And so that's Florida passing a living wage, 15 an hour. That's Nebraska uh, getting rid of some of these terrible payday loans. Medicaid, expan uh, Medicaid expansion in um, Missouri. And in South Dakota, a Trump plus 27 state, they legalized recreational marijuana. Uh, and so Julie and I, we call these issues that are kind of popular progressive issues, workers, wages, and weed. And the idea is that these are like wedge issues that are actually more popular than a political party. And they might present a, a useful tool to get people more engaged in politics. And so that was kind of the frame that we came into this. And then the first program we developed was essentially city ballot campaigns, ballot measures in Texas cities. Um, you know, unlike California, for example, where you can do a statewide ballot measure, we can't do that in Texas under our constitution. But a bunch of cities can, uh, they, they do have this initiative power. And so our idea was like to put these workers wages and weed issues on city ballots as a way of engaging more people in politics. And so um, because Julie and I, uh, Julie Oliver and I are both based in Austin, we started here uh, and we basically built off of an existing policy that y'all probably know uh, a lot about. And it's just that during the George Floyd protests in 2020, the uh, city council convinced the police chief to update the police manual and stop making arrests for, for basically four ounces or less of cannabis flour and also um, stop issuing tickets. And this was part of a bunch of reforms in Austin that were called the Freedom Cities Reforms. But um, important to note about these reforms is they don't actually change city law. They just live in the police manual. And so theoretically, even though right now, Austin is not arresting people for marijuana uh, possession, four ounces or less, the a subsequent chief or subsequent uh, city manager could change that. And so we decided, well, let's put this on the ballot. Let's, let's kind of test our theory, uh, use Austin as a laboratory for, for maybe going statewide. And, and since then we actually have, uh, and let's put, you know, basically banning citations or arrests for marijuana possession on the ballot and pass it into the city code. And then we also added uh, a second measure to kind of test, um, could marijuana carry along a second issue? Uh, our joke is that marijuana may not be a gateway drug, but it can be a gateway issue uh, to get people involved in politics. And so we have a ban on no-knock warrants also on the ballot. And these are bl blended into one measure that's on the, the city of Austin ballot right now called Prop A, 
which would both stop low level marijuana enforcement and ban no knock warrants. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the, the thing that's happening right now up until Saturday. Saturday's the last day of voting, uh, election day. Uh, we've got this um, Austin uh, Freedom Act, we like to call it. And then we can talk more about it, Jax, but we're also in um, five other cities putting marijuana on the ballot for, for, for November uh, in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely, I want to talk because I saw some news about Denton I want to get to. Uh, we have people who watch from all over the state. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I definitely remember that resolution um, that passed through city council to, you know, restrict the budgetary um, expenses for any officer time or THC testing, and that can be reversed. So it was very interesting to see this, you know, like kind of budgetary line item uh, restriction being turned into something that we can codify, right? And keep accountability throughout um, different iterations of oversight, right? Um, so how do you feel like early voting has been going in Austin? Like I have a yard sign in my in my yard. Um, I'm sure that a lot of other Austinites do too. Um, do you have any kind of feel? Like, is there any kind of like early polling out there or? You know, there's not polling, um, but we do have some ways to measure uh, how it's going. Um, so first of all, we know how many total people have voted in Travis County and how many people have voted in Austin. And we know the voting history of people. So we don't know how, they, whether they said yes or no on Prop A, but we do know, for example, that um, basically less than 18% of the people who have voted in the Austin primary uh, have a Republican voting history. So basically it's frequent Democratic voters. Um, now we know this is gonna be popular across party lines, but that's one proxy. Like this is like 80 plus percent uh, likely Democrats who are voting. And so that means it's pretty popular. And then. You can also gauge it based on money being spent and zero money, zero money is being spent against us. So that's a good sign. That's nice. And um, yeah, a very good sign. And then also like, you know, the, the police union, right? Um, the Austin Police Association is kind of the most likely opponent for this. They kind of, um, you know, carry water for the folks who just want to lock up more people basically. Um, and, you know, their police chief has said, well, my member, not, not their chief, the, the president of the police union has said, my members actually are not against the marijuana reform. Uh, and yeah, Ken Cassidy, like, right? Yeah, Ken Cassidy, and he's like, he kind of grumbles. He's like, well, I wish we could keep yeah. no knocks. Um, but you know, even though he doesn't love the ban on no knock warrants, um, they haven't spent a dollar against this. So I think that's a good sign as well. That's interesting that they haven't spent any money against it at all. Um, I mean, you know, like the cannabis thing, I've talked with Ken about it before, but the no knock um, ban is definitely an interesting thing that they're not, you know, taking a, a harsher stand on that. Um, so May is going to be voting day. So I made sure that I put information about um, polling locations, uh, where you can read the full measure, all of that information there for the people that are with us today. Um, but what other cities are you also doing this in? You said you're taking it statewide. I think I can probably name a couple, but I'm sure you've added a bunch. <laughs> well, yeah, um, you know, basically, we, you know, and I reached out to Jax early on, you know, we reached out to community, community groups to kind of ask who wants to do this. So we didn't, it's not like we're going into communities and just saying, hey, Colleen, Texas, you're going to have marijuana reform, whether you like it or not. Like we've been invited in. Uh, and so uh, in Bell County, in, in the city of Colleen and also nearby Harker Heights, we're petitioning. Uh, I think we're extremely close to qualifying for the ballot there. In Denton, um, uh, we just turned in our signatures today. And so we'll know in about three weeks if we qualified, we think we did. Uh, and then in Elgin, small town uh, yeah. to the e east of Austin um, uh, in Bastrop County, uh, we, we uh, submitted our signatures there. And then um, the, the biggest campaign that's still going um, is in San Marcos. And so uh, we're looking to qualify there as well. So we got two college towns, uh, you know, UNT, Denton, Texas State, uh, San Marcos. And we've got a couple of these basically Fort Hood based communities. Parker Heights and Colleen. And then we've got uh, Elgin, which is basically the town in Bastrop County that has the strongest black community. Uh, and that's where we had some, some local leaders invite us to come out. 
Okay. So it sounds like Denton, you've submitted signatures, but you're waiting for them to be verified, right? And I think I even saw that it was the biggest um, submission of signatures for Denton County. Um, so congratulations on that, everybody up there. I know you were working with like Texas Cannabis Collective and some local advocates up there. Sounds like in Colleen, you're still collecting signatures. In yeah, fact, we're still collecting in we're still collecting in Colleen, Harker Heights and San Marcos. Okay. Um, I think, uh, you know, you kind of get in the weeds, you learn all these rules in each city, but, you know, basically in Colleen, we'll actually know the number of signatures we have to turn in after this election Saturday, May 7th, because oh. like they determine, they determine your signature requirement based on the most recent election. So we're going to actually use the one that's coming up. Um, but yeah, the biggest chunk of work left, if y'all have any members in San Marcos, um, that's where we've got probably five uh, weeks or so of work left to go. Okay, we actually, we know some people who are based out of um, the San Marcos area, so we'll make sure that we connect you with them. And I know that you put the link in the chat here for Ground Game Texas, and we've linked to y'all on our site. But if there's a city uh, where you are not yet active and someone is interested in reaching out to you about that, is there a way for them to do that on your site? You know, the best way is um, to email me directly. You know, I'm kind of the person that gets to, to brainstorm the programs and I'll, I will leave my, um, my email here. It's mike at groundgametexas.org. Um, awesome. But uh, basically, you know, we go through a little, you know, vetting process. Uh, obviously we love for anyone to reach out, you know, uh, people in the chat are asking about Bear County, Nueces, how about Northeast Texas, Franklin County, Wood County. And so we're open to it. Um, I mean, the first thing we do is we look at the city charter just to make sure that it's allowed. Uh, in general, it's the so-called home rule cities in Texas who, that are allowed to do this. They have special powers under the Texas constitution. That's pretty much most of the older cities in Texas. Um, but we have to check that with check the signature requirement. And then we also wanna know we have community support. Um, but once we have a little coalition, uh, we're down to pretty much do this anywhere. And even if it's probably too late to start a new campaign focused on November of this year, there's technically there's an election every six months in Texas, what's called the uniform election. You know, we got May 7th and we're going to have November and there'll be another one in May, another one in November. It just keeps going. And so um, we're definitely starting to plan for 2023. And we would love to have some of these campaigns going while the next legislature meets. Right. Like, let's say we pass this in six cities this year. Uh, um, but, you know, cannabis reform still isn't on the docket, so to speak. We'd love to be in places like Waco or just places that surprise you know Dan right. Patrick and the legislature like oh they want it there too maybe it's finally time to take state action I mean and the idea is that you know in concert with y'all and everyone else who's fighting in this movement that we can build up enough pressure to convince the legislature legislature to take action awesome awesome so for everyone who's watching right now the key takeaway is if you live in Austin May 7th if you have not already voted get out and vote if you live in Denton and Elgin you'll be able to hopefully vote on this um, in, a, in the November election make after we've made sure that all of the signatures are correct right and then you're still gathering signatures in Colleen San Marcos and I'm missing one more oh yeah Harker Heights next to San Harker Heights. Uh, next to Colleen yeah. Okay. So that is, if you're on this call, that's what's happening now. I definitely see some people who are interested in helping you in the chat. So you've dropped your email there and make sure that you reach out to Mike about any questions there. Um, I know I'm going to be probably keeping my sign up even after election day, um, but I am definitely looking forward to seeing the results and seeing um, that it is going to pass in Austin and that we're going to get this done for sure. Right on. Well, thank you so much, Jax. And I, uh, we, we are planning a watch party on Saturday night. And so I'll drop that. Um, we've got a mobilized link there in case awesome. uh, anyone wants to come through. We'd love to see you. Yeah. And Mike is going to be joining us on May 18th for our social down at Flamingo Cantina. So hopefully we'll be able to celebrate all of the hard work that you and all of your volunteers and, and uh, a poll worker, not poll workers, uh, signature collectors have done and then get some um, more people interested in maybe helping in these other venues as well. So thanks for joining us today, Mike. And uh, I'm going to, I see a few questions in here that are more about state policy rather than what we're talking about. So I'm going to kind of pivot to that and talking about the primary elections. Um, before you sign off, is there anything that you wanted to leave us with here, Mike? Uh, well, you know, I feel like, you know, the, the, the time is right. I mean, to me, when, when Beto launched his governor campaign and was like immediately talking about weed, 
And then Greg Abbott was like, well, maybe we should stop locking people up for personal use. I feel like it's almost there. And so I, I think next year could be the year. Um, so anyway, I'm optimistic and appreciate everyone here who's been, did, been doing the work for so long. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Mike. And um, until next time, I will see you again in May in a few weeks, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. So take care, Mike. Thanks, Josh. And, and I'm going to go ahead and take a few of the comments and questions in here that you guys have. Um, okay, so a few of y'all are asking about what's going on at the state level um, and how can you be engaged right now. So number one, is in Texas, you know, Mike kind of alluded to it at the beginning when he was speaking there. Um, we can't collect signatures at the state level to change our laws. So in Texas, you know, our laws for marijuana possession are governed at the state level. So we have to go through the legislature and then we have people at the local level doing efforts like Ground Game Texas is. We also have first chance programs, diversion programs, this kind of patchwork of policy of people trying to you know, stop the bleeding, as it were, um, having to do with all of these arrests that are happening um, in our state. So our legislature only meets every two years for 140 days. So right now we're in what's called the interim. And several things happen during the interim. Part of that is the election cycle. Um, so another thing Mike alluded to is that some of these kind of safe districts, uh, they're more active in their campaigns during the primaries, which are in March, uh, rather than the general election that's in November. Um, so we had our primaries back in March. We did put out our Texas normal marijuana policy voter guide. Um, so you can see how incumbents voted in the past, how candidates stand on the issue. And there are some primary runoffs that are coming up. So in the description of the live stream, you're going to see not only the links to vote for Prop A on May 7th, but you're also going to see information about the primary runoffs, um, when you can vote early and when actual election day, which is May 24th. Now, I will say there are runoffs at the state level happening in both Republican and Democratic uh, runoffs, and there are also some at the local level that are happening. So there is a link where you can find out, you know, what does your ballot look like? What are the um, people that you would have the opportunity to vote for? And you can participate there. Now, one thing I want to make sure to note for you guys is that if you voted in the, you know, Republican primary in March, you must continue voting in the Republican primary in May. If you did not vote in March, you can still participate and you can vote um, on whichever ticket that you decide you want to participate in. So you'll find links all about the voting and um, the voter's guide there for you. And I did want to let everyone know um, that essentially, you know, we've got the primary runoffs now. Um, and then in November, we'll have our general election. And just like six days after the general election, these new legislators are able to actually draft and submit legislation. And so we've already been talking with some of our key allies about legislation that we would like to see drafted and submitted. So we are also preparing for that um, high impact legislative session that we're likely facing. Um, so I definitely encourage everyone to go to texasnormal.org and you'll see our activist training there. And I really encourage you to participate in that so that you understand the process leading up. Um, I wanna encourage everyone to participate <clears throat> with the candidates in your area, because once legislative session starts, everybody's real busy. That's not when we're making friends and starting relationships. <laughs> the time to do that is now. And while they're on the campaign trail, more open to hearing from constituents and from voters. Um, so I will say that. Now, let me kind of click back over here and see if we have any other questions. Um, so Eric is talking about um, state revenue from cannabis sales, both medically and uh, recreationally. So first of all, Eric, I will say that currently there are no taxes on medical cannabis in Texas. Um, the program is fully supported through very high licensing fees. Um, now, while high licensing fees, of course, get carried on to the patient, I also uh, don't believe that taxing medicine is 
proper practice for that. Of course, you know, your medications that you get from the pharmacy are tax exempt, of, of course. And so we would not really be highlighting state revenue from medical taxes. However, when we're talking about um, a regulated adult use cannabis market, taxation is definitely one of the things to talk about. There was a white paper with VS um, where they talked about the billions of dollars that could be brought in through a moderate taxation rate. And I think that that is something that it's also important to talk about that we're learning from other states is those super high rates of taxation actually have not um, kept people inside of the legal market. Um, it has kind of created a very strong um, middle market and people even returning to the illicit market. Um, so a lower um, tax rate is more conducive to long-term um, maintenance of, of the uh, adult use market. So that is another thing to consider. Additionally, jobs, right? Um, I think that the VS white paper was saying that it would be between 20 and 40,000 jobs um, having to do with that. So those are definitely things that we have to talk about whenever we're meeting with legislators and um, with uh, you know, candidates, potential elected officials. Right. I'm not seeing any other questions here right now. So um, I guess I'll leave y'all with this. Uh, if you are in the Austin area on May 18th, we'll be at Flamingo Cantina. Mike will be with us to talk about um, the results of the um, election and um, what that means, what the next steps are. We'll also have the Mau Mau chaplains there playing some live music for you. Um, so that'll be really great. And then um, of course, moving through the summer, engage with your candidates, be ready to vote in November. Um, we will be announcing a new date for the Texas <clears throat> normal uh, veteran puff and putt event, our veteran golf benefit that we host out at Willie Nelson's um, uh, golf course. So we will be back out there. We're still getting some of the details together, but we hope to have the date announced to you guys really soon. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. And um, just make sure you go to texasnormal.org and check out that activist training guide, our voter guide. And if you're not subscribed to our email list, you can subscribe there as well. So I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And a special thanks for Mike for coming on um, to talk a lot about what we've got going on here in Texas and how you guys can be engaged. So um, on that note, oh, one last thing I do want to say. Um, there are some federal actions that you can participate in. So if you go to normal.org slash act, there are actually about five federal action alerts that you can participate in right now. Um, so I encourage all of y'all to go and do that and get your activist uh, you know, muscle uh, practicing there. So um, now for real, I'm gonna say bye. So <laughs> y'all have a great Wednesday night and I'll see you guys later. Take care. <laughs>